Hey, how's it going guys? Chris here with another one of those Battlefield 1 weapon guides. And today's video is going to be all about the Perino Model 1908 from the In the Name of the Sard DLC. A pretty chunky looking weapon which was believed to be the first Italian designed automatic machine gun ever made. Weighing in at a whopping 27 kilograms or 60 pounds, the original Perino design was a bloody heavy piece of machinery which rendered it unsuitable and well pretty much unusable for field combat as it would have been a really awkward thing to cart around and accurately fire on the battlefield. For this reason, the original Perino would have been fixed to stationary positions and used along fortress walls to fend off the enemy. Though the gun's weight would eventually be lightened in 1910 with newer lightweight models, weighing just 15 kilograms, 55% lighter than the original designed in 1901, and these would have been much more in line with other machine gun type weapons made around that time. Chambered for the Italian 6.5x52 Carcano round, more commonly known for being used by the M91 Carcano rifle, the Perino had a rather interesting design, allowing it to use and store its ammunition in a fairly unique way. Instead of using a belt like the German MG08, the Perino typically had an ammo hopper fitted to its left side, which could be easily topped up by an assistant gunner with 20 round strips, kinda like the ones used by the Benema C. The strip at the bottom of the box would be fed into the gun first when fired. But unlike other automatic machine guns, which would typically eject the empty cases individually, the Perino neatly placed the empty cartridges back into the strip instead, which protruded out of the right side of the weapon. And once all of the bullets from the feed strip had been fired off, it would simply just drop out of the side of the gun as one whole unit, allowing the next row of bullets in the ammo box to fall down and replace that discarded strip, complete with all its empty cases. The reason why the cartridges were put back into the strip wasn't because the Italians were concerned about littering the ground with those metal casings, but it was mainly to prevent them from pinging around all over the place, hitting the gunning crew operating the weapon and generally creating an uneven surface, as the loose metal cases rolling around on the floor could have been a bit of a pain to work around under the foot, especially with a gun which could theoretically be fired non-stop. The Perino Model 1908 was designed by a man called Perino but not in 1908, as it originally came to be in the year of 1901, which is when development of the weapon first begun. A couple of years later, the gun was ready for testing, and with the tests being a success, the Perino machine gun was eventually adopted by the House of Savoy Army, to be used in Italian military service alongside the Maxim MG and the Fiat Ravelli Model 1914. 150 Perino machine guns were bought and mainly mounted around fortresses in the year of 1908, which is where it gets that name from. But because the Perino had qualities which were far superior to other weapons in service with the Italian army at the time, and with the fear that the gun's design might be copied by other gun makers from other countries, the Italian government quite stubbornly decided to label the Perino 1908 as a top secret weapon, which meant that it wasn't put through any open trials and so it was never really refined and made suitable for mass production. Because of this reason, along with the fact that the Perino was a pretty hefty weapon, proving it to be less adequate for field use, the Fiat Rivelli M1914 became the standard Italian machine gun used in World War I instead. The Perino was still used in the war, and the models used around the fortresses would be deployed on the battleground, set up using tripod mounts and used in stationary positions mainly. But otherwise it was generally distributed in very small quantities, and despite having numerous advantages over other adopted machine guns, which probably would have made it a very effective weapon for war if it was manufactured in larger numbers and issued to troops, the Perino never became an adopted standard, which could have been a missed opportunity for the Italian army. So history lesson over, it's time to run over how to get the Perino in Battlefield 1. You're going to need to install the In the Name of the Sar DLC first and foremost, and then you'll be able to work towards those assignments. Just like most of the other weapons in the DLC, the Perino has two distinct variants which can be unlocked, with these being the low weight and the defensive. And to unlock the low weight variant, all you're going to have to do is get 40 kills of the MG15NA low weight, along with 10 squad resupplies. As for that defensive variant, this is another simple one which shouldn't really be too hard, as all you've got to do is get 50 kills of the Browning Rifle along with 20 kills of the Repeater Pistol M1912. So just how powerful is that Perino? Well despite looking like a beast, it's actually not going to deal a hell of a lot of damage, as the weapon shares its damage output with the likes of the Lewis gun and the Hewitt Automatic, meaning that the Perino is going to deal one of the weakest amount of damage as a whole for the support class. 
At those closer ranges, reaching up to 11 meters, you're going to be able to inflict up to 23 damage per bullet. Though beyond the 11 meter mark, that damage is going to start to decline gradually, down to 15 at the range of 46 meters, reaching the Perino's minimum damage output. So it's not exactly going to be a very punishing weapon to use over longer distances, often taking up to 7 rounds to put someone down. And at a minimum, you'll need to land at least 5 shots on target up to 30 meters if you want to kill an opponent with full health. Apart from the show show, this is pretty much the same as the other support weapons in CQC, which are all going to dish out a similar sort of damage up close. But because the Perino deals less damage at longer distances, requiring one more bullet to kill than a lot of others past 38 meters, this can often make it seem like a less powerful gun overall. Putting things into perspective, beyond those medium ranges, you can fire three well-placed bullets into your opponent's face, and they're still going to have enough health to walk away from that fight. It'll help to increase the time it takes to kill them, but it's still going to take four bullets at a minimum to take them out, and that's providing at least three of those hits count as headshots. Firing at the top speed of 450 RPM, we can safely say that fire rate definitely isn't one of the Perino's best aspects, as 450 RPM really isn't anything to brag about. It's one of the slowest shooting machine guns on offer for the support class, matching the same speed as the Bename C, which is a weapon that actually deals a bit more damage at range, often allowing it to kill in one less bullet. The Perino fires slower than both the Hewitt Automatic and Lewis gun, despite sharing the same damage output though it's still not going to be quite as sluggish as the Shosho, which fires 25% slower still. Because the Perino struggles to deal a high amount of damage very quickly, this reflects heavily on the time it takes to kill an opponent, making it, up to the Russian DLC, the slowest killing support weapon overall in the game. This can often make it a very difficult gun to competitively take on enemies in one-on-one -on -one gunfights, and because it takes such a long time to kill, getting yourself outnumbered is often going to end pretty badly. So taking this into account, it's usually best to play with a bit of a defensive mindset, and avoid getting into situations that the gun just won't be able to get you through alive. With the Perino having a fairly quick muzzle velocity of 820 meters per second, this is one factor that can help with its effectiveness, and make it easier to land shots over distance, as despite it taking quite a lot of bullets to kill at range, at least you don't have to worry about leading your target's movements very much as they scurry around in the distance. This is another one of those aspects that points towards the gun being best designed for defensive playstyles, as you can plant down in a stationary position and gun down your enemies a bit easier having a higher bullet speed. And because the weapon can fire up to about 65 rounds all in one go before it'll overheat, means that you'll be able to lay down suppressive fire for longer and become more of a problem for lone targets in the distance within your line of sight. The Perino deploy time pretty much goes against the idea of it being a run and gun weapon too taking 1.5 seconds to draw out from other weapons and gadgets. So it's definitely not a very mobile choice to use, taking a little bit more time to deploy than other support weapons. And this is another factor which could potentially leave you in a vulnerable position up close, if you're not careful. Now, the Perino might not be the most dangerous thing in the world to have equipped, but it is going to be able to handle with recoil very well, as that horizontal value of 0.12 makes it a very accurate weapon, which isn't going to stray off target too much as you open fire, and that low vertical kick of 0.2 is also going to provide you with more stability than most of the other support weapons in the game, as the only other LMG which has a lower amount of vertical recoil is the Bename C Storm variant, which is literally just 2% less. Not exactly a massive difference. Because of these stats, the Perino 1908 is generally going to have a very high level of precision when engaging targets over all distances, and although it's still not quite as accurate as the Hewitt Automatic, which has a lower horizontal recoil value, because the Perino has a lower vertical recoil figure, this means that you'll probably find it to be a better weapon for prolonged fire and keeping the enemy suppressed with a longer stream of bullets. Despite having these low recoil figures however, the Perino is extremely susceptible to spread while strafing around and shooting in ADS as it's got an aim down sight spread value of 1.02 when you're on the move, which is pretty damn high, making it far less accurate or stable in the process. Because of this, it's almost always best to stand still when taking on an enemy, especially if you want to take advantage of the gun's manageable recoil pattern. Once again, another reason why it might suit defensive playstyles. There's two variants of the Perino, and the low weight is the one that's going to have the statistical edge as it's going to regain its accuracy a little bit quicker over time as you hold down on that trigger. 
If you're not a big fan of the weapon's iron sights though, you could opt for the defensive variant, kitted out with its very own mid-range optical scope, and this might provide you with a better view of your target and make it a more comfortable weapon to use that way. And thankfully, because the low weight variant has a bipod and the defensive variant has a tripod, the two variants are going to be even more suitable for defensive gunning, both having the ability to boost accuracy even further when those attachments are being used on flat surfaces. Aside from the MG15 suppressive variant, up to including the Russian DLC, the Perino 1908 has the largest ammo capacity in the whole game, holding up to 120 rounds in total. It can carry 20 more bullets in the Parabellum, and because it fires them out at a much slower rate, you'll be able to manage how many you shoot out a lot easier, generally sparing more ammo from being wasted in the process. Because you've got so many bullets at your disposal, you'll be more capable of laying down suppressive fire for longer, essentially killing more enemies before you'll need to reload too. And with the Perino often taking quite a lot of bullets to kill over those longer distances, at least you don't have to worry about running out of bullets to eventually get the job done. But of course, all guns have to reload eventually, including the Perino. Though most of the time, you'll just be topping the ammo box up with stacks of strips, which doesn't really take too long to do. To top the gun up with a single strip, it's only going to take 2.4 seconds, giving you an extra 20 rounds to use as you need it. And for every strip extra on top of this, we'll simply just add another 0.83 seconds more. Along with topping up the gun with fresh strips, you can also replace your partially spent strip with a new one by reloading the second time, ensuring that the weapon is completely full of ammunition. Though this is going to take an extra 3.8 seconds to do, which isn't really worth it in most cases, unless you really want to be sure that you're definitely not going to run out. Reloading when the gun's on empty is going to be a similar kind of matter, though there's going to be a longer pre-reload delay of 3.16 seconds, and this is generally going to increase its reload time potentially taking up to 8.74 seconds to perform it in full. But thankfully, because you'll hardly ever have to reload the gun from empty, so long as you keep topping it up every now and then with new strips, this isn't really going to be a big problem, and the Perino can generally manage with its ammo pretty well overall. But anyway, in conclusion, the Perino Model 1908 is definitely a gun designed for players who prefer to play defensively. Because it has such a slow time to kill over pretty much all ranges, due to its sluggish fire rate, gone by with that generally lower damage output over distance, this makes it a bit of a hit marker machine, and a less ideal weapon for running and gunning, and generally using up on the front lines in offensive situations. Even if you've got exceptional aim, you'll still probably find that the weapon just won't be able to win a lot of one-on-one -on -one gunfights within those close to mid ranges. Though because the Perino has such a low and steady recoil pattern, this should at least make it easier to stay on target, and get those bullets to land where they should be, that might otherwise miss with other guns that have higher amounts of kick. The higher accuracy that you'll gain from the Perino will help to compensate for the weapon's lower power and speed, which should allow you to kill a bit quicker, providing you can use that low recoil to your advantage and land your shots. Otherwise, it's not going to be very effective at all, so even though the gun can handle with its kick pretty well, you'll still have to make sure your aim is on point if you want to survive up on the front lines. Moving around whilst opening fire is going to reduce that accuracy by quite a bit, especially with the Perino spread increasing by quite a lot in ADS when strafing around. So staying put in stationary positions, or planting down and using that bipod or tripod, will always provide you with the highest level of precision, making it a more productive weapon for gunning down advancing enemies or taking on targets in the distance. It might take a lot of rounds to kill beyond medium range, but it should be easy enough to line up shots, with the gun having such a low recoil pattern. And with the Perino's muzzle velocity also being on the quicker side, you won't need to account for bullet speed very much, thus making it a bit more ideal to use over those longer distances too. Being able to hold loads of ammunition is another one of the Perino's strongest points, along with the fact that you can essentially top the gun up really quickly with more bullets. Running out of ammo and generally being caught out with an empty gun should never really be a problem when you're using the Perino, as you'll have tons of ammo to play around with, allowing you to keep enemies suppressed and take on targets one after the other without stopping. It's definitely not the deadliest gun out on the battlefield, and that slow kill time will probably leave quite a few people frustrated with its ability to actually take their enemies down, but having a higher accuracy than most, and being able to deal with its ammo really well, makes the Perino a very manageable, simple weapon to use, providing patient players with a more passive option with its own unique benefits. So that's all for another one guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button if you did, and be sure to subscribe to stay updated with loads more videos coming soon. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the next episode.